It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to touch on that great stage of human drama that we talked about a couple of videos ago, and that's sports. In this case, sports photography. In this case, sports, <laughs> sports photography with the Canon R5. I'm gonna give you five benefits of using the Canon R5 for sports photography, and I'm gonna give you a bonus five top tips for shooting sports photography. Now, I went out recently and I shot a water polo game. And this is a fast moving sport. A colleague that I used to work with reached out. Her son is in his senior year. He's having his final water polo game. Would I come and shoot it? It turns out she saw the photos of the 5K, asked if I did sports photography. And so I said, sure, I would love to. I'd be honored to. And so what I thought we'd do is I have brought back the international box of mystery. And back here we have the uh, Olympic flame going. And so we're going to have top reasons why you should use the Canon R5. But first, you're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. All right, number five. No, in no particular order, we're gonna share five benefits of the Canon R5, and we're gonna share uh, five top sports photography tips. All right, here we go. Reason number one, the Canon R5 is what you should trust when you do sports photography. And the number one reason is speed. I'm gonna wrap a few factors into this. One is the high speed continuous shooting. This camera can shoot 12 frames per second. Now compared to the EOS R, which I said is not the greatest for sports photography, that shoots eight. And if you have it in servo mode, meaning it's moving the focus point with you as objects move in the, uh, in the viewfinder, the R can only do five. So 12 frames per second, high-speed continuous shooting, I find that to be sufficient. We know there's things out here that outstrip it, like the Nikon Z9, which is at 120 frames per second. It's like faster than the human eye can see. It's also $6,000, but this is a great camera for sports photography. So speed, high-speed continuous shooting. Frames per second is 12. And also, speed has to do with the right speed. So the CF Express card in here allows extremely fast write speeds. I think it's like 1700 megabits per second. Now that could be the read speed, but the write, write speed of that card is very much up there. So speed, it's fast. Frames per second, high speed continuous, and write speed, and you need all three. Here's a tip. Tip is be ready. Now when you're doing sports photography, you can't afford to say, oh, I have the camera on my strap and I need to get it up here. No, you have to walk around like this. You have to hold your camera out in front of you. You have to be ready for those shots because those moments happen and then they don't happen again. It's not like basketball practice where you're like, oh, I'm gonna get this layup again, do it again. That moment may happen one time in that game and so you have to be ready. Have your camera up, have everything turned on and ready to go. All right, let's go for another reason the Canon R5 is supreme. Oh. Now this one is amazing and don't overlook it. The Canon R5 can take the RF lenses and one of those is the superior, I would argue, RF 70-200. The RF 70-200 is the lens that made my shooting the 5K with the EOS R possible, I would argue. This lens is amazing. Now, I used it in this context because I was shooting water polo, which was at a local high school pool. I knew that there was gates around the pool. I knew that I probably couldn't get too far away. And the maximum distance I would need to reach is from the edge of the pool to maybe half, three quarters away across the pool. So I could zoom out and get a wide angle shot. I could zoom in and get um, a pretty tight shot that captures the player engaged in a, a play. And, and that emotion, you would see their face. So this is the right focal length for that venue. It may not be for every single sports venue, but it's quick, it's fast, it's accurate. I love this lens. I wholeheartedly recommend it. Let's go for a sports photography tip. Test shots. So as soon as I entered the pool, I started flipping on my camera and doing test shots around the pool. Even as I was talking to the client who was welcoming me, we had only a few minutes to the start of the game and I was just checking exposure, checking shutter speed, the things I need to dial in, I got test shots. Now, if I had waited for the game to start, the most important play could have been the very first second or very first minute of the game. And if my test shots weren't dialed in, 
I would still be fussing with my settings. So always make sure you do test shots before the game starts. So that might be taking pictures of players while they're warming up, etc. But be ready, take test shots. Why else will we use the Canon R5? Here we go. Ooh, we're gonna save this. Save it. That's gonna be our last one. Let's get another reason for the Canon R5. Right here. The Canon R5, if you don't know, is a full frame camera. And on top of that, it's 45 megapixels. So every image that you shoot, you have the ability to crop in and select a, kind of a central focus of action. And because the resolution is so robust, you can get a very crisp image, even zoomed in 100%, 200%. And I'll demonstrate that with some shots right here. So full frame, 45 megapixels, great for sports photography. If you have to crop in because you shot wide to capture the, the unpredictable nature of the game, but you need to crop in for the final composition. All right, let's get a tip going. Here's a tip. Ooh, this is my best tip. I'm gonna save this for last. We have our two last things set up. All right, what's another tip? Tip in sports photography, anticipate. Study the game, pay attention to what's happening, learn how the game works. Even if you're not familiar with that sport, watch and be ready for, like for example, the ball changes possession, it's in the opposite, uh, it's in your team's hands, your player is making their way back down the pool and that ball gets lobbed. Watch your player's eyes, watch where they're looking and they're gonna anticipate and they're gonna guide you where that action is gonna be. So that's how you're able to capture them catching the ball, them, you know, sometimes they don't even catch the ball, they just whip it at, towards the goal and they barely touch it and it's passed on. So you have to anticipate, kind of be knowledgeable about the game and watch those patterns. It, it comes into like, the tip, be ready, but also anticipate, study that game, watch your player's eyes, know where they're gonna move, know where the action is going. All right, let's go. Another reason for the Canon R5 to be your choice is right here, it's stuck on the bottom. Right here, the autofocus, the autofocus. I am not kidding you. The Canon autofocus never, it never failed during this whole game. High speed, continuous shutter. I, I, I was just blazing away these frames and some of the, the, the pictures I gave uh, the client were a series of like 10 or more photos of the play happening uh, instant by instant and the autofocus was always, always locked on. It was amazing. I used eye autofocus a lot. I experimented with spot, um, but usually I used eye autofocus because the player's eyes were visible. And then the cannon would uh, lock on to their, their face or their head or their swim cap and it would follow them. And even in the action moments where I was bursting, panning, it was locked on. So the Canon autofocus is a reason to use the Canon R5 for sports photography. And here is our second to last sports photography tip. Ooh, that's a good one too. Look for your subject to be backlit. I'm gonna show you a couple examples here. The difference between a non-backlit subject is there's more likelihood the subject's gonna blend into the background, but when you have your subject backlit, in this case, this was outdoors, and the sun was uh, kind of setting, and when I shot into the sun, you'll see how the sun outlines their arms, the shoulders, and gives more three-dimensionality, more three-dimensional shape to the subject. So shoot backlit sports photography tip to create more dimension and have the subject pop off the background. All right, now here are our last two right here. Uh, I pulled them out and set them aside, so I'm not gonna uh, fake like uh, I'm pulling them out. Oh yeah, I will, that's kind of fun. All right, I shot 1600 images within an hour. This is like four quarters, six minutes each with timeouts and all things like that. I shot 1600 images, largely because a lot of it was in burst mode, high speed continuous. Here's a reason to use the R5 for sports photography. There's a rating button on the back left corner at the top. There's a button that says rating. And so when the player was pulled out of the game, even though I'd watch him on the sidelines, making sure I wasn't missing a moment, uh, of him talking to his colleagues or his coach or something like that, colleagues, his teammates. Um, I would review the pictures that I had just taken and if I saw one that kind of met my criteria and we're gonna talk about that tip in a second, if I saw one that met my, my, my criteria for a keeper, I'd hit that rating button once, assign it a one star rating. Why one star? 
All I was trying to do is differentiate it, a rated image from a non-rated image. And when I import it into Lightroom, then I could just simply hit sort. And when I got home, I could import and see all my rated images. And so out of 1600, I only had to look at 100. And out of those, I culled out like 30 or so uh, that were kind of repetitive and not part of an action sequence. And then I sent 60 or 70 to the client. And I was done within 15, 20 minutes. And that's a pretty impressive feat. So that rating button, it's easy to get to. It's right there on the back. And you just have to acknowledge this image. I want to see it later. And I can do that in downtimes in the moments um, between plays and uh, not miss anything. Make sure you don't miss anything and be ready to import those and send them off to the client. Now, these are images I'm not doing any post-processing on. I did a little tweak uh, with the exposure and I applied that, uh, saved it a pre as a preset and applied it to all just to get a little more teal out of the water, a little more contrast, but uh, basically no post-processing. All right, tip number five. These are the three things I look for when I'm rating an image to save it and send it to the client. I'm looking for the subject's face. Now, I am looking for that face because I'm looking for the emotion. What's the story with an athlete? You're out there with your camera, they're moving all around, but if you can't see that face, you can't see the drama, you can't see the human emotion. Remember, we're here, we're celebrating the, the Olympics, the sports, the stage of the glory of human drama. Okay, did I pump it up enough? But sports has competition, pain, joy, um, all these things that we associate with the, the highs and lows of the human uh, experience. And so I'm out there with my camera. And so the first thing I'm looking for is a facial expression and emotion. The next thing is an action. They have to be engaged. They don't have to be, but I'm looking for them engaged in an action related to the game. Now you can get somebody's face on the sideline, they're reacting to a play, that's cool too, but you're looking for that face of emotion in the action of the game. And the third thing is composition. I'm looking for an artful composition. So those three things, that's my, my kind of criteria I look to save an image and send it to the client is, can I see their face? Can I see the action of the game? And is the composition artful? Now out of 1600 images, I am blessed to have, you know, shot over the course of the game enough images to satisfy that criteria and send it off to the client. All right, well, that's it for today. Thank you. Give me a like if you like this video. If you have tips that are helpful, share them with me, put them in the comment, leave me a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed, hit the bell and so you get notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.